Thank you. All right, can you hear me? Uh, um, yeah, I, I didn't like I didn't choose the name Gutenberg, uh, <laughs> but uh, it just happened to be um, uh, because you know Gutenberg obviously has um, uh, served as an inspiration for you know creating content and and, and writing, and that's what WordPress also is all about. Um, yeah, this is my I think my my sixth year in the United States after I moved over here from Germany. And uh, WordCamp LA is, um, has a very special place in my heart because it was the first um, WordPress event that I ever went to. And the first time I, I met people who like, were as passionate as, as, as I was about the project. And so I love coming back here. Um, last year I spoke about WordPress and um, Gutenberg specifically as well. I had a, a code um, workshop about like, creating your first Gutenberg block. And uh, I had some really good feedback on that. And so I thought, hey, I'd uh, come back this year and um, give a more, you know, um, broader uh, talk about uh, Gutenberg and where it's at and um, where it's going, hopefully, uh, in the near future. Before I go into that, however, I think we should um, take a, uh, um, a short look back to, um, to what it is and where it all started um, and do a kind of an introduction to Gutenberg for everyone here who has not heard of it or has not had a chance to um, uh, look at it yet, who uh, has missed the um, notification in their WordPress uh, dashboard. <laughs> um, so if you're one of those, um, just a, a small look back to um, what is Gutenberg. Um, it's um, a project to create a new editor experience or editing experience in WordPress and kind of revamping the, um, the existing editor um, for post and page creation. Um, and it, it kind of um, tries to uh, make it easier for everyone to create um, rich post layouts uh, in WordPress. Um, in early 2017, when the, the project was first kicked off in, um, with um, this post by Matt Mullenweg on the uh, on the make wordpress.org slash core website, um, he announced the focus for, uh, for the year and said um, that it's endeavoring to create a new, uh, yeah, that the new page and post building experience um, and kind of use the concept of blocks, right, content blocks, um, to unify and replace the, the various disparate ways of adding content to WordPress, um, like with um, widgets or short, co short codes and, and embeds. Um, as WordPress users, when they you know when they start interacting with the software, like there's a lot of concepts to learn, um, a lot of um, things to um, yeah come to grips with in terms of like how to to create content in WordPress and how to write posts, um, and to um, there's a lot of terminology also to uh, um, to learn, and and that is kind of trying to to bring that all together. This is what Gutenberg looks like today. Um, this is the, the demo content that if you activate the plugin, just to like give you an idea of, of what I'm talking about, um, it makes it really easy to create um, rich posts layout. Um, something that um, requires nowadays a skilled team of designers and developers, right? Um, and we're trying to, to enable every WordPress user to do that on their own. Um, creating um, yeah, beautiful and elegant layouts for their for their WordPress sites. Um, when you think of most modern news sites nowadays, um, they have a blend of like full screen images, right, and uh, videos and interactive elements, um, and uh, a creative layout of content as well. And um, many of these um, sites have you know their own development teams and um, you know either internal or external. To, um, to work um, on making these layouts possible. And uh, Gutenberg is um, trying to uh, you know, bring that power of, of like the things that page builders do nowadays as well to the end user. Um, it does that by embracing the block, right? Just the, the piece of content that can be any kind of content that you use to compose your, your posts and pages. Um, our current content paradigms that we um, have in WordPress not to, uh, today have not really kept up with the, uh, the modern web. If you look at um, other um, uh, uh, CMSs around the web or you know, companies like Wix and Squarespace, uh, it's a lot easier for folks to get started with creating their websites and um, 
uh, yeah, and it's it's a lot harder in WordPress. And so by by unifying short codes and widgets and um, the dozens of you know currently supported embeds in WordPress, um, we're hoping to um, create a single standard for content creation in WordPress. So folks, you know, have to just learn one thing when they get started with WordPress and can go from there and can um, apply that knowledge um, for any. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm sorry, and, and apply that knowledge, um, you know, uh, unrelated to what kind of content they want to add to their posts. Okay, that's better. Sorry. Um, not only is it a, a unified uh, user interface, but also a unified um, code API, uh, which makes it a lot easier for developers to uh, develop for uh, Gutenberg and the new editing experience, um, and also uh, to uh, customize the way that um, certain blocks and certain content elements uh, work within the post editor. Um, to summarize, ultimately the, the vision of, of Gutenberg is to make it much easier to uh, you know create um, uh, rich content um, through ensuring good defaults. Um, this is also one of the, the WordPress um, uh, principles, right? Um, uh, working out of the box and making decisions for users and, and, and avoiding options, right? So the power of, of good defaults is very important to, to Gutenberg as well. Um, and also by bundling um, advanced layout options, is there, yeah? I don't know what to do about that. Move it up a little bit. Well, if it turns off, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope it uh, continues to work. Um, yes. So it also comes with um, advanced layout options. Um, so there is um, a, a column block, for example, that allows you to um, um, create columns in, in various aspects. Also, the the concept of nested blocks, where you can uh, put content uh, within other uh, content blocks, um, which is really powerful uh, and can be leveraged by you know, all developers who are building websites for their clients as well. Um, so with, with all this, like the idea is to make um, authoring content with WordPress accessible to everyone, right? Um, and so Gutenberg approaches that, that vision with um, a few key concepts. We talked about blocks, right? So the, the base principle of Gutenberg is everything is a block. Um, you know, a piece of text, a quote, um, galleries, images, short codes, everything is called a block. Um, even chunks of custom HTML um, that you integrate, um, no matter if it's added by a plugin or if it's provided by core, everything is a block. And you use these blocks to compose um, your posts and pages. Um, so the, the benefit is that you only have to learn and master a single interface, um, the block interface. And then you know how to do pretty much everything else uh, just with that. Um, all blocks are created equal. Um, so they all live in the same ad menu interface. Um, and uh, we use recency, uh, search, um, a list of, of groupings as well to ensure that um, blocks use the most, blocks that are, that are used most often um, are easily within reach. Um, so it's, it's, it's that, and then you also have keyboard shortcuts that allows you to um, yeah, insert blocks really easily and really fast. Um, there's a lot of like power user tools as well that have baked into Gutenberg um, that help with um, content creation. For the first time, um, placeholders um, are front and center in, in you know, creating content with WordPress. Um, so if, if you have a custom block, for example, or in this case, like the image block, um, if, if that block can have a neutral placeholder state, it definitely should. Um, a placeholder block kind of shows a button, in this case, for example, to open the media library. Um, a text placeholder block shows a, a writing prompt, right? Like, for example, in, in, in the quote block. Um, and embracing placeholders um, through that, um, we can predefine editable layouts. Uh, this is a concept that I'm going to um, speak on a little bit uh, more later on, um, which is a really powerful tool for um, agencies to create um, websites that um, yeah, users can, can manipulate 
but not you know um, upend the design and and make it all you know look weird. Um, yeah, for users they just have to like fill in the blanks. It's really easy uh, and a really powerful uh, tool. Um, with a block technology, it also optimizes for uh, the user experience of manipulating content directly on the page. So you give you get like immediate feedback um, to uh, to what you're doing. It's it's a it's a very short step away from like front end editing if you think about it. Um, and so plugin and theme authors will have also an ability to um, use the different tools that Core will provide to kind of create their own tailored and specific blocks um, that gives users a, a true what you see is what you get experience. Um, an environment uh, for creating on the web. Yeah, I think we kind of have that to a degree in the current editor with um, previews for like embeds, for example. Um, but like the, the true power of Gutenberg here is really like the, the the immediate feedback when you like change the presets, right? Um, customization is um, another piece. What previously uh, you know, required using complicated markup and uh, shielding users from from breaking it. Um, I think a lot of folks here um, have been there, uh, mostly through short codes and, and meta fields, for example. Now becomes a lot easier and intuitive, right? Um, and with blocks, developers are able to provide um, like uh, you know theme specific blocks, for example, to you know directly render a portion of a layout, so you can define which kind of blocks you want for for a page layout to come together. Um, for example, like a, a three column grid of features, for example, um, and it clearly specifies um, what can directly be edited by the user. Um, and I'm going to have a screenshot for that later on as well. Yeah. So where is Gutenberg today? Um, when it was last year at, at the State of the World 2017, um, it was announced that um, 5.0, um, the yeah the major version of, of WordPress that Gutenberg is supposed to ship with, um, was supposed to be released in April. Um, and then at WordCamp Europe, uh, we were um, hoping um, to be able to release it in September. And uh, it's September now, and it's not there yet. So. <laughs> um, Right now, I think uh, uh, a lot of polishing has taken place, um, a lot of tightening up on, on APIs, right? Um, so, so me personally, I, I worked on um, a lot of the PHP APIs to kind of provide backwards compatibility in terms of um, uh, API language, right? For developers to understand or to like query whether there is a block on the page or not and how to, how to style them or not. Um, just to like provide backwards compatibility with existing uh, PHP APIs. Um, but also um, uh, bringing it up to date with you know features that exist in the current post editor and making sure that you know that transition is is, is seamless. Um, yeah. So I I don't know when it's going to be released. Um, I talked to a Gary Pendergast and he couldn't give me a, a specific date either. Um, but I'm pretty certain um, that'll be released before WordCamp US this year, which is in early December. Um, so in the next couple months. Which should give um, which should give the team plenty of time to do um, a beta release and uh, a release candidate phase to you know polish out the the latest um, bugs and inconsistencies um, and get it into the hands of users. Um, speaking of getting it into the hands of users, uh, in 4.9.8 there was a um, dashboard prompt introduced uh, to WordPress, um, and thanks to that the um, installation count, like the active installs of of Gutenberg um, plugins. Have skyrocketed, and they're close to um, half a million uh, websites now that use WordPress, um, and um, hundreds of thousands of posts have been uh, created um, with Gutenberg, um, and also, um, yeah, just through that, uh, the team has gotten a, a tremendous amount of feedback, and um, was able to, you know, um, Im improve the experience for everyone there as well. So that was a success, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm just waiting for the, the merge proposal. Like everyone else, I guess. Yeah. I want to do a quick demo. Demos are always fun, I thought. And um, I want to show you a little bit um, about the latest features that were introduced um, in the you know last couple of weeks. Um, and I also want to introduce you to um, a really useful website that you can use to. Let me see. There you go. 
you should check out Gutenberg. So if you go to um, wordpress.org slash Gutenberg, um, you see a, a front-end version of Gutenberg. And uh, I mentioned earlier how close it is to, um, to like front-end editing. And, and this really goes to show um, how short of a step it can be in the future um, to make uh, content editable on the front end um, by, you know, add it, adding pieces of, um, yeah, meta pieces of Gutenberg, like the, the, the um, meta bar on top. So um, I mentioned the um, edit, add block interface, which is in the top left. There's plenty of ways to add new, new blocks to your, um, to your posts. Um, so, give me a sec. So with the, uh, the forward slash, for example, um, you can just like search for certain um, blocks and, and introduce them uh, just like that. Um, and uh, I mentioned the, the placeholder um, concept. Um, it, really, it really allows users to uh, understand what's happening with their content, right, and where it's going to go once, once you fill out these placeholders. Um, We have on the right-hand side um, meta information about each block, which also changes with you know each block that you select. And so, as a developer, when you create custom blocks, you can really um, you know dive in and um, and create custom experiences with every content type that you you create um, for your users. Um, a lot of shortcuts like you know text sizes that are that are easily changeable for users. Um, uh, a more fine-grained uh, approach here, as well as as you saw in the in the slides with the columns, for example, that you can just you know change and you get immediate feedback um, from from the preview here. Yeah, one of the newer features that we just introduced is um, the spotlight mode, which I love. Right, like everything just becomes gray and like um, uh, yeah, reverts into the, into the background really, and you can focus on on one specific block that you're just editing right now. And you can really like dive into that. Um, another thing that is hard to see here in this example because we're outside of um, the WordPress admin is the uh, full screen mode, um, which in this case it just like hides the the admin bar on top, right? Um, but like within within uh, the WordPress admin, like it hides all the the menus um, on the side. And uh, it really like lets you focus on on the content creation process. Something that has been introduced to the existing editor um, as well, a long time ago, and so it kind of was you know brought up to um, that existing standard. And if you um, don't like the uh, the inline um, uh, toolbar that is uh, yeah in line with every every content block that you that you create, you can also have that sit. Um, on top is kind of like the, the unified toolbar um, with all the editing uh, options um, you know that you kind of uh, know from your Microsoft Word or the existing editor as well. One thing that I find really really handy is um, creating. Give me a sec. Is creating um, uh, reusable blocks, which is something um, any 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 block that you configured. Uh, you can give it a name, as in this case, it's just a text three, for example. Um, and this block can is is going to be saved as part of the uh, the block interface. So now you will find it at the uh, reusable block sections, text three, and you can reuse those in any post and in, in every page that you have. Um, and so you can also, whenever you make changes to that block, like it will propagate to you know any instance that that block is is used, um, which is really handy for like you know if you think of I don't know like a, an author bio for example that you want to add to every every post right, like that's something you can configure once and and reuse over and over and over again, um, and in the latest release they also added um, a function where um, uh, reusable blocks. Oh, okay, that's in the admin, never mind. Where you can uh, manage reusable blocks and kind of export and import reusable blocks as well. That's going to be the next step, which is really, really powerful because now you're able to like share your blocks that you've pre-configured with other users and other sites. Um, and so it's just like, it just goes to show like what is, what is you know, possible there in terms of uh, the next steps. Um, yeah, reusable blocks, layout blocks is also something that, um, yeah, it's just just you know gives you that many opportunities and so much more possibilities to create content than the existing editor editor does. 
Anything that I'm missing on the, that I should show, that I haven't shown? No? Yeah. Yes, thank you. That is actually something that I, I was planning on showing, yes. So you still have a, um, uh, a code editor and that, let me uh, increase that. And that shows you what the, uh, um, the markup looks like. And as you can see, like all the meta information that Gutenberg is using um, is all uh, bundled in HTML um, comments. And so you can just copy and paste that you know, chunk of code uh, into a regular website and it'll show up fine, um, maybe without styles if you, if you um, have not included the style sheet. But it'll, it'll work out fine in terms of markup um, because it uses just plain HTML to, um, um, to, to save that content. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, it's 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 part of the markup as well. Yeah. So it's it's um, yeah it's 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 compatible with the latest HTML versions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the question was sometimes there's um, unexpected behavior or unexpected results happening when you switch between the text editor and the, the, the preview group, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like adding line breaks. Um, it's, it's something that, um, as far as I remember, that um, was a problem in the past, like in the early days of Gutenberg in like 2017, um, but they, that they have fixed uh, a long time ago, yeah. Since everything like goes through JavaScript anyway, um, it's pretty easy to like catch these things and, and prevent them from happening in Gutenberg, um, which is a lot easier than in, in TinyMCE, yeah. Yeah. Are there reusable plots available for all the user types in a particular instance, or is it in the filter? Um, are reusable blocks um, reusable for every user? Yes, they are. So they are like on, on a site basis, yeah. So everyone can, anyone who, who can like edit posts has that capability um, can use those, yeah. Uh, yes, him and then her, yes. Uh, when, when it comes to, uh, as far as some third party, some third party vendors like uh, Cornerstone or Elementor and stuff like that, they have similar features and similar abilities to move blocks and create themes or create templates. So the question is, is it possible to um, import existing um, templates from other plugins or like um, page builders, is that correct? Yeah. Um, as far as I know, not at this time. I think it really comes down to the, um, the page builders um, making that available as well. Um, the, the difference between, between a lot of these plugins and, and, and Gutenberg is that Gutenberg really just uses HTML um, and, and you know, this, this um, uh, comment markup that I just showed you, um, while um, uh, most of these plugins use, use meta fields and just a different structure, like a different data structure. And so um, th that would have to be combi combined, yeah. So that was a, the lady, yeah. So the question, uh, I think I'm, <laughs> I broke it. Okay, nope. Now? <laughs> Hello? Okay, this is better. Um, I'm sorry, so the question was uh, responsive, yes. So ideally, um, uh, it should be, so um, no, definitely it's, it's responsive as you can see here. Like I can, I can uh, re, um, readjust this, the, the page and it is responsive. So the, um, the editor itself is responsive, um, but the themes still have to provide the styles on the front end to make it as responsive as in the editor. Is that, does that answer your question? Right, so if you build like these columns in, they're not Right, the theme would have to add styles for that, yes, yeah. And we had questions over there, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So the question was about um, accessi accessibility um, and specifically um, color accessibility. Um, 
So out of the box, out of the, out of the, hello, no. Hello, no. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that microphone. I'm gonna talk into the, the, the video microphone. All right, so um, out of the box, um, it is uh, double A or triple A uh, compatible. So the uh, WordPress accessibility team uh, has been working with uh, the Gutenberg team on that as well. But I mean, you are able as a user, right? You are able able to um, to circumvent that a little bit. So like for example, um, let's use this one. And it's like color settings, and you can set a background, and you can set a text color, and that is definitely not accessible in terms of like color, right? So um, it is definitely something that uh, uh, users can still manipulate to a to degree where it's not compatible. All right. I'm so close. I'm so close to making this work. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Oh, I can just. I can just. I can just hold it. I can just hold it like this, and then. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back into my presentation, because I'm still owing you the. Okay, one question, and then back into the, the presentation. I still owe you my, my outlook for tomorrow, and then there's still more time for questions. The gentleman. Um, is 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 there a way for certain user roles to only uh, edit specific blocks? That is a great question that I don't know the answer to. It is technically, of course, possible. I would assume. Um, but I don't know if that is currently the case. Do you know the answer to that, Alex? No. No. Okay. I'm, have, I'm sorry, Alex. I'm going to have to ask you to uh, to <laughs> to ask that question later during the Q and A phase because I really want to talk about the future and like what's next. Alex, what do you think of that? I don't like. Okay. Yeah. Let's 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 do that though. Let's let's do that. I'm going to do. Oh no! I'm, I'm now I'm good. Now I'm good. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> now that I figured out how to work, how it works. Um, all right, tomorrow. Next up. Um, so I talked a little bit about predefined layouts, right? That users can, um, where, where it's just a set of placeholders that users then can fill in. Um, so one of the, and this is a terrible slide, and I apologize in advance. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really hard to see, especially on this screen. Um, so what it's supposed to show you is is a selection um, flow for page layouts, right? That are predefined, um, and that will look like this, for example, which is much better to much better to, to see. Um, and you have like a, a image place, placeholders, and then you have like a, a, a header placeholder. And so as as developers, you're able to like predefine these kinds of page layouts and have folks just like fill in the information that they need. Really, really easy um, and pretty straightforward, and no one is lost. So I'm very excited about that. Um, that kind of like the, the next step of what um, um, Gutenberg is is already capable of doing, but like needs more development uh, currently. One of the things that um, I'm constantly being asked about at work camps is how um, the introduction of blocks and and giving users more more freedoms in terms of like how to create um, pages and, and posts um, is business opportunities and, and the impact on on you know the theming market and and you know especially for people who, who earn their living with WordPress like how does that affect them and um, and a lot of them uh, see Gutenberg as a, a threat to their you know business model um, and and my response to that is always um, yes and. Um, but also look at the opportunities that, that come with Gutenberg, right? I don't think that uh, since the introduction of the concept of themes and plugins, something as fundamental, a change as, as fundamental as that has occurred in WordPress. Um, and also something that if you like get on, on board now and learn about Gutenberg and understand how it works and be able to develop for it and, and build with it, uh, you know, uh, gives you that much more of an edge um, over your competitors in the market as well. Um, my friend Eric Debelak, he um, spoke at WordCamp Orange County this year. Um, he did like a, a first, my first block kind of intro um, talk. Um, and his company created a website called wpblock.party um, where they, yeah, <laughs> great name, Block Party, um, 
where they uh, sell licenses for custom blocks that they created. And that's just, like, that is exactly what I think uh, the future is for, you know, Gutenberg blocks, is selling uh, custom blocks because the demand for that will be, will be incredible. Um, and I feel like, um, yeah, block plugins um, are the future of WordPress. Um, and I'm very excited about that. So if, if, if you are looking for, you know, an edge, something new, um, something, you know, where you, ha you have an advantage over your competitors is um, look into creating custom blocks and, and how you can uh, market those to, to uh, WordPress users. Once Gutenberg is in core, right, um, what's next? Like, where do we go from there? Um, there is a, a phase two already in planning, which takes Gutenberg and the, the block-based concept from like the post and, and, and uh, page editing to um, site customization, right? So you're customizing your site, kind of replacing the existing customizer. Um, and I talked to, uh, to Gary, like I said, and, uh, and I asked him like when he thought that WordPress, uh, that Gutenberg phase two is going to be available and it's going to land. And he was pretty, pretty solid on 2019, which I found, which I found um, optimistic. And <laughs> <laughs> but he made some very good points. He said that um, nested blocks that are currently already in Gutenberg, right, were a stretch goal for version one, um, but definitely something that was essential for version two. And we already have that. Um, Basic components uh, don't need to be recreated. The data layer is already there. Design is already there. APIs exist. Um, so a lot of the, the groundwork has already been done and can be built upon. Also, he said, um, the customizer is, um, or like yeah, the customizer code is not as much legacy code as the, um, the editor was. And so it's going to be a lot easier in terms of like backwards compatibility. Um, and using those you know, well-defined APIs that they have um, to, to make it a lot easier for uh, existing plugins and themes to um, convert. So, um, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's, that's what, um, yeah, has me very excited about Gutenberg. It's really the next step in like being able to use blocks to create uh, entire pages, right, entire websites and not just uh, posts. Finally, uh, themes. Themes are gonna, gonna um, experience a lot of changes going forward. Um, I talked to um, Matt Cromwell last night at the speaker dinner about exactly that, how um, themes traditionally um, not only supplied styles um, for layouts, but also markup, right? And they kind of like decided where certain content would go, um, specifically sidebars and like post content and maybe a footer, and you would have, I don't know, a, a hero image at the top. Um, but they won't do that going forward, right? Like once phase two lands and site customization is based, is based on blocks, um, like the entire markup is going to come from WordPress. And so themes are kind of not necessarily limited, but can focus on, on styles, right? And how to really present, you know, these blocks. Um, and another challenge will be uh, styling blocks for varying contexts. So you can have a, a recent post widget block, right? that um, traditionally shows up in the sidebar or, you know, if a theme has like a footer sidebar, it might show up in the footer. But the theme doesn't know going forward where it's going to show up. It can show up anywhere. It can show up, you know, uh, at, at, as the first item on the page over, over the, the main site title, for example. Um, and so, like, styling that for different contexts um, is going to be a challenge going forward. And I'm really excited to see um, how, you know, theme developers deal with that and also with what way WordPress comes up to, like, make that easier, right? Is there going to be, like, a footer block that doesn't really have any, any visual thing, like something you can see, but just, like, serves as a, as a, as a context-giving element? I don't know. But things like that, um, yeah, are going to be very exciting for theme developers going forward. Finally, I want to close, um, before we go into Q&A, um, with um, asking you to get involved, right? Um, a lot of contributors from all parts of WordPress have been working on, on Gutenberg so far, a lot of developers, um, designers, a lot of designers, um, testers, especially now that Gutenberg is installed on half a million sites. Um, and, and you can be part of that, right? If you want to learn more about Gutenberg, um, I encourage you to go back to wordpress.org slash Gutenberg, the site that I just showed you. Um, it's really easy to just test out Gutenberg and kind of, you know, use it as a sandbox and playground. Um, it gets um, updated automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, there's also documentation. 
Um, I would probably encourage you to just Google WordPress Gutenberg documentation, then uh, remembering that link, but <laughs> um, get the plugin in the plugin directory or from the comfort of your WordPress admin. Uh, just um, search for Gutenberg. It also should be uh, the, the first um, featured plugin uh, on that screen as well. Um, run tests. There's um, a whole uh, website uh, based on uh, around WordPress testing. And then, um, very important, help with issues, report bugs on github.com slash WordPress slash Gutenberg. Um, and if you really want to help out, join the conversation in Slack. Um, they meet every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific in the core editor channel. Um, that's where you really, it's probably the easiest way to get involved, like ask questions and, and um, offer to help. Um, or do something like I just did, give a talk, um, host a meetup discussion around, work, uh, about, around Gutenberg, and um, yeah, learn and share knowledge that way. And now, Alex, I'm ready for a question. So the question was, what's the vision around portability of Gutenberg also to other CMSs? Um, so that is actually a, a question that I don't have too much, I, I can't give an, an answer with too much authority on. Um, so um, obviously it's, it's possible to, to port Gutenberg, however Gutenberg is, is written for WordPress, right? Like a lot of the, the data structures that it's based upon are definitely very WordPress heavy uh, and expects a lot of like the existence of, of like um, PostMeadow, for example, right? Um, I would, I would, um, I would welcome if Gutenberg would continue to be uh, developed as a as a separate plugin outside of WordPress or as a separate um, project outside of WordPress, so that it is reusable by other people and other uh, projects. Um, but I don't know if that is going to be the way forward. Traditionally, it has not been right, so that makes me kind of worried. But it's entirely possible that with a a project of that size and, and the amount of work that has gone into it, um, that, that that is something that they would want to do. Yeah. You know. Yes. All the way, yes, the lady in the back, yep. Right. So the question is, how, how are you, how are we going to going to support um, sites that don't want to adopt the the Gutenberg paradigm? Um, so for now, it's pretty easy in terms of like uh, the five point release um, using the uh, uh, the classic editor plugin, right? To um, to avoid that um, go, going forward, that's probably something that um, it's going to be harder to do. Um, depending on whether the site is an active site or like um, a site that doesn't receive new content anymore, um, I would I would recommend um, yeah just going with the the, the classic editor plugin for um, for the time being. Um, and if it's a site that that does have active um, content creation, um, it is it is worth exploring ways to um, to, to to Gutenberg fi it. Also, existing posts don't necessarily have to conform to to Gutenberg, right? If you if you don't change them, you can just stay the way they are. And it's more about like a, a workflow issue going forward um, with with new posts. Yeah. Yes, first row. Uh, okay. What about all the plugins that we got now? Like your site got a lot of plugins. Is it going to be up to plugin developers to? 
What happens to um, plugins that um, that you have on your site? Is it up to their developers to be Gutenberg compatible? Yes, it is. Yeah, and, and we've seen actually quite a lot, especially the the um, the more popular plugins. Um, in terms of like getting ready for Gutenberg, um, like Yoast SEO, for example, is is pretty far along. Uh, WooCommerce, um, there's they have uh, entire teams working on getting ready uh, for Gutenberg and being block based, right? And there's also some very exciting um, uh, possibilities opening up there as well, being a, a block based system. So it's definitely um, on. Yeah, it's definitely something that developers have to to um, prepare their plugins for. Um, if if it's something that you know um, manipulates content, yeah. Yes, in the back. Uh, the gentleman with the glasses. Yes, yeah. Hi, pleasure to be on Beach Day. Two questions. One, what about support for uh, writing in Markdown natively? And two, today, a plugin can take down your whole site. Will plugin blocks by any sort of immunity? Um, so, two questions. First was um, wait, uh, so the first plugin, uh, the first question was. Markdown, Markdown support, yes. Um, I honestly don't know. I, I would be surprised if there was Markdown support. Um, and if there is not, um, I'm sure there'll be a, a plugin that, that would um, add that. Um, and in terms of like uh, a plugin being able to take down your site, Natalie McLeese has created a fantastic plugin for that um, that helps you prevent that, right? There you go. Helps to troubleshoot it. So um, I think I think as soon as lo as long as there's going to be PHP running on on WordPress sites and and it looks like it's going to be for for a while, um, there's that is always a possibility, right? Um, but there are remedies for you know at least trouble trouble troubleshooting that and, and and fixing that and preventing like white screen of deaths, yeah. But not within Gutenberg necessarily. Yes. Uh, so are there plugins being developed that um, make it easier tr to transition to, to Gutenberg? Um, can, can I ask like what specifically you are um, concerned about? Because I mean, like, like, like I said, if, if you're not touching, are, are you editing a lot of old posts and, and uh, you know, Right. Right. All right. So I mean, um, for a more conservative approach, there definitely I would uh, recommend going with the classic editor plugin for now, um, and then wait until you feel like the, the plugins that you use are Gutenberg ready, and then and then make the switch. Um, I'm not sure there's a whole lot of um, uh, s steps. To take in terms of like getting getting ready for Gutenberg, other than like uh, schooling, or like educating uh, your users in terms of how to use it and and what changes in terms of like how to create content, if that makes sense. Uh, from a technical point of view, I think it's um, it's pretty easy to make to make a a on off switch between like the classic and and the Gutenberg editor. Um, yeah, but I mean it is it is definitely an issue currently that the plugins will not be uh, ready out of the gate. Um, but as I said, like that is something that the, the Gutenberg team has been um, working on extensively in terms of, and, and talked about um, with plugin developers as well and, and try to educate people um, to get their plugins uh, ready for Gutenberg. Uh, yes, let's go over there. <laughs> Is, is there an indication for plugins being Gutenberg ready? Um, so right now there is not an indicator like um, supported by the plugin directory per se that says, okay, we classified that plugin as Gutenberg ready. It is more, more or less an honor system like pretty much everything else in, in WordPress. So um, I would encourage to either look for um, a plugin description saying we are Gutenberg ready um, or reach out to, to um, the authors in, in the support forums. Uh, most of them are pretty responsive uh, and can answer those questions. Yes. 
Oh, that's an interesting question. So the question was, um, for larger sites, is it possible to have Gutenberg active on a per-user basis? Um, not out of the box, but I mean, that is definitely something that, I mean, technically should be possible, right? Um, that is really interesting. Um, I've not come across that. Um, so yeah, like I said, not out of the box. Um, it would be something you would have to probably write yourself. Um, yeah, that's a cool idea. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea. Maybe I'm going to write that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have, yes, the gentleman over there. So, is it going to affect any of the sites here or other websites that are in the world? Is it going to affect any of the sites here or other websites that are in the world? I'm sorry, I, could you speak up? <laughs> is it going to affect the speed of the website? Oh, the speed. Right. So the question was, is it going to affect um, performance, the website's performance? Um, it should not because the, um, the content that is being displayed on the front end is, is uh, safe in the same way that it is safe currently and displayed in the same way that it is displayed currently. So it should make a difference. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, the lady. So my So the question was, can you use Gutenberg for future posts and pages and, and keep the uh, existing ones in the classic editor? So I'm not entirely sure what the plan is for once Gutenberg is in core, but currently um, you, can, um, you can do both, right? You can, you can open uh, posts with the classic editor. Um, I would assume that we will continue though um, to be the case with the classic editor plugin. Um, that is a good question. I honestly don't know the answer to that um, because I, it, it comes down to um, having that link around um, and, and the code for the classic editor um, to be able to do that. Um, yeah. I, that could be an option, yeah. There, yeah, the, the classic editor block where it's just like uh, an editor, yeah. Editor in the editor. Yes, please. So at the time, Let's say you have a whole bunch of old editor documents. Uh, when you go into Gutenberg, is the conversion to the Gutenberg comment format, does it occur at the time you open one of those pages or only at the time you write it out? Um, so my knowledge is when you, so the question was when, when does the existing content be converted into a Gutenberg post? Uh, to my knowledge is when you open the, the edit screen for that. Yeah, I mean, you, you have the option of not saving it, of course, right? Um, and this, as, as, as far as I know, it, all, it also like uses that existing editor block to like keep it within one uh, piece of content. Yeah. So that's a great way to test an old page. Right. Into the, into Gutenberg and you don't have to write it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. So will short code still be a thing? Will short code still be a thing? No. Uh, there'll be blocks. So there's just going to be like any other piece of content. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. The lady in front. Um, is 4.x going to continue to be patched? Or how yes. So the question is, is uh, the 4.9 branch going to be supported? And, and if so, um, for how long? Um, for the foreseeable future. So I, I can't really say um, uh, how, how long uh, that, that branch is going to be supported. But as a reference, um, we currently still port back security updates um, to 3.7, which is, I think, 13 releases ago, right. like 13 major releases ago. Um, and I think 3.7 is at 3.7.26 or something, like as the version number. Um, so I don't see that changing anytime soon, even with Gutenberg in, in core, yeah. It may be limited to uh, security updates, though. Um, John in the back. Yeah. Like 
is there any standardization for um, uh, markup wrappers around blocks for themes to, to play with or to, to work with rather? Um, so I think the the CSS classes have a have a, a standard um, way of being composed, right? So um, you should be able to uh, to um, uh, write styles based on on the CSS classes for for each block, yeah. But that's going to be a challenge going forward as well, yeah. Especially when you when you cut count in um, custom blocks from developers and plugins. Also, um, quick PSA: please don't when you create blocks and write blocks, please don't bundle them with your themes. Always have them in the plugin so that they're not you know that you know your content is not lost when you deactivate the theme. Um, always have that in a plugin. Yes. In, in the code editor, can you harm the underlying code um, for blocks? Uh, you absolutely can, yeah. I mean, if you, if you like, uh, manipulate the, um, the HTML uh, comments that, that have the data in it, um, you absolutely can. I think Gutenberg is pretty good about recognizing that, though, and just reverting back to a, a custom HTML block for that. Um, yeah. Do I have still more time? I'm out of time? All right. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tall. You'll find me around. Um, just <laughs> ask me questions. <laughs> Uh, later and uh, yeah, enjoy your lunch. Thank you so much.